Hey guys, this is Agent Mindstorm, and guess what? I am doing a Pocket Edition video. I have not done one of these in a while, and the reason I'm doing one today is because they just added a new feature. Command blocks. And basically guys, I wanted to do a tutorial of how command blocks work, how to use them, how you get them, everything about them, and I thought I would do that today. So let's get started. The very important thing with a command block is how you get it. You cannot find it in the creative inventory in any tab, anywhere. It is not in the creative inventory, not in your inventory crafting, you can't craft it. The way you actually have to get it is you have to type in a command, slash give, at p, which is nearest player, command underscore block. Now, ignore the chat that's going crazy, that's a glitch, and that's not how it would look if you're watching this in the future, and as you can see, it tells me that it gave me a command block and now I have it in my inventory. So, when you place the command block down, it'll look really weird, there'll be a bunch of arrows and block and circle, and just ignore those for now. When you open up its inventory, there'll be a bunch of things, and I'll try to explain them. First, in the top left, the thing that says hover note, that is like a name the command block. You're giving it a custom name, so let's call this command... Com command... one. So now if we close it, as you can see, whenever we look at it, it says command one. That's all that is. This chooses your block type, which there's three types, and we'll get more into those later. I honestly have no idea what conditional versus unconditional does. And redstone, this is really interesting. Always active means it's like activated constantly as if you have a redstone block in it at all times. And needs redstone lets you activate it with redstone. Down here, you can't type anything and you can toggle previous output. This actually tells you how your last command ended up. If it failed, it'll say invalid command syntax, which I don't I know if I pronounced that right, but I really don't care. Now in the top right, this is the most important box, command input. This is where you actually type the command. So we're going to type a very simple command, which is give nearest player. As you can see, it's got the nice little graph down there that tells you all the different ones. Nearest player, and we're just going to give me cooked, no, stone because it's easy and it's very quick. As you can see, give at p stone. That's all it'll do. And then this plus sign just means it's a screen for really long commands, as you can see. It's an entire screen just for typing. And that's what the command block inventory looks like. So now I've got command one that will give me stone. And since we didn't put it on always active, we can put a button next to it right here, and then we can actually activate it. And as you can see, it gave us stone and in chat, it gave us that feedback. If you don't want the feedback in chat, you can do slash game rule, command, no, send, wait, no, command block output, that's what it is, block, output, and put false. That will turn off the command block, so when you activate it, it won't say that in chat. It just says you have been given stone. If you want to turn that off, do the another game rule, slash game rule, send command feedback. Now, the reason there's two different ones is because the first one is for command blocks and the second one is just for commands. So, as you can see, now we've turned them both off and I just checked it. It says true, but you can turn it off if you want by putting false. So, then there's more types of command blocks than just this one. There are also the repeating and the chain command block. So, let's change two of them. This is now a repeating command block and this is now a chain command block. They'll change visually so you know which one is which. So. The only difference between these are a few. So the first one activates just the command once when it's activated. The second one, this repeating command block, activates it 20 times per second. So I'm going to put that in the hover note, 20 times per second. So as you can see, 20 times per s, 20 times per second, that is how many times it is activating. And now, this is a very laggy command block. Do not use it to do something insane. So we're going to once again do give at p stone because it doesn't really destroy anything. But if you use this to summon creatures, like I accidentally did once, it will actually crash the game if you summon too many. So be very careful when using this one. But as you can see, it gave us 20 stone. It should. So let's check in our inventory. We now have 21 because we have given, been given one. So from 21 to... And now we wait for it to activate. Now we should have 41. Nope, 40. Apparently it gives us 21. You know what? Forget it. 20 times per second, 21 times per second. Close enough. And now's the third command block. 
This commands block is the chain commands block. Now this one's really confusing because if we give it a command of give at p stone, just like on the other ones, it won't actually activate when we press this button. As you can see, there's no feedback in the chat. It doesn't, it doesn't say anything down here because it didn't actually do anything. Now the way it actually activates is by being activated by another command block. So that's what the arrows are for. It shows you the direction of the command blocks and if they're, you have to have either a repeating or a normal, an impulse pointing into the chain command block for the chain command block to activate. Also, it will not, it still won't activate though. So if that confuses you even more, let's get out a button and let's, as you can see, it still won't give us stone. Even though I'm pressing the button, it won't give us stone because this one is not set to always active. If we set the redstone to always active, then we activate it, you have been given stone. That's how it works. And these are used for activating multiple commands with only one button and no redstone. So for example, if we also put give at p button, I don't know why I chose a button. Wait, no, that's not even one. Uh, we'll just give ourselves a log. And so now give at p log, now it'll give us a log and stone. And we only needed one button for that. So that's the three basic command blocks. Then there's also another one. If you do slash give at p command underscore block underscore minecart, you will actually give yourself a command block minecart. So now if we get out some rails, I'll show you that we can actually put it on the rails. And now as you can see, it's pretty much the exact same as a normal command block, but it's locked. You cannot change any of these settings. You cannot change it to always active. You cannot change its condition and it's stuck as a repeat. You can, however, give it a hover note. So MC CMD, minecart command. And so now, as you can see, it does have the hover note option and it also has these options. It also has cancel. Cancel is for canceling the previous command. If you made changes that you don't want, this will undo the changes. So now I don't know too many practical uses for this command. Uh, command option personally, but I'll just show you how you activate it. The way you activate it is you get an activator rail and you have to power the activator rail with a button or a lever. So if you put, no, not a hopper, if we put the lever right there and activate it, and then we put a command in here to give nearest player stone, when it, when it rolls over it, you'll see that we get a lot of stone in chat. And we only got two, but it is a repeating command block, so it will act like a repeating command block too. The longer it stays on there, the longer it does it. I don't know too many practical uses, and I kind of wish you could change its type too, from repeat to like impulse and chain, but that's the command block minecart. So now let's show you some uses for these command blocks, and I'm going to have to switch to another world for that, but yeah, there are some really interesting implications of them. One example is this room that I made right when they added command blocks. I immediately wanted to test if they would work like the PC version, and they did. So one interesting thing you can do is you can always have a block constantly respawn by constantly using the slash set block command in a repeating command block. That's what this is doing. It's constantly replacing my oak wood, and every time I break it, it'll replace it. Another one you can use it for is for resetting things. So say I built a bunch of stuff in here and I, I covered all this up with bedrock or something. It's not actually bedrock, pretend it is. Say I covered that all up with bedrock and oh no, I messed up, my inventory is full of things. You can also use them to reset big rooms and put titles like that. So there's many uses for command blocks and before you'd actually have to activate them by going into chat and manually doing it, but having a, a, a block that can run a command is much more useful than having a, for example, oh, for a second I thought the game crashed, than having someone constantly running commands because there's only so fast a human can type. But a command block doesn't need to type. So as you can see, this is a very useful command block and let's show you how this room actually works now. So let's look at the command blocks basically. So let's first go into creative mode, game, okay, I keep forgetting how to do that. Game, creative, and now here we are. So as you can see, the first thing is there's a lot of command blocks and some redstone right behind this button. So the, what this will do is it will clear the nearest player. That will clear my inventory whenever I hit this button. This one will do the title, 
command to craft a diamond pickaxe. As you can see when I press this, craft a diamond pickaxe, that's what that does. This command block over here is the one that will actually reset the room. So the way that it resets the room is that it clones this empty version of the room. It clones this version of the room over here. So the interesting thing is this is like a live model of that room. So say I break a few blocks in this wall, it should be copied to that wall. Oh yeah, okay, it won't live change because I have it on a mask setting, which means that it'll only update when certain things are done, which here, as you can see, it's like a living model and it's only replacing certain things. It's very interesting. And that's what the clone commands can do. So I have two ones. This one completely resets the room. This one is constantly cloning this to make sure that anything broken on the walls will not be broken. And then I think that's all that for this, except that there is one more, these four command blocks, and these are the ones that are constantly resetting the blocks. These blocks, they constantly reset, and they're actually not, they're not dependent on this command block over here. Now, I don't really know why I did it like that, but the point is, that's how I did it, and I think the command blocks are going to be amazing for Pocket Edition. I sure hope they come to console sometime, guys, but hopefully, by the time this video's over, you know how to use a command block by now. And also, look at this. I cannot destroy anything in this room without it being replaced. Isn't that cool? But guys, for now, that's all I have to tell you. Do you like command blocks and will you use them? Tell me in the comments, but for now, I do want to tell you all, thanks for watching, and I will see you later.